Hey everybody, Stakey back. Uh, real quick, thank you so much for all the likes, the subscribes, the comments. I really appreciate it. I'm so grateful, but make sure to always go to the original author. Let her know that you're loving the story because she is the one who works super, super hard on it. Um, so she deserves all that praise. I'm just reading her stuff out loud. Um, and second of all, I have a Twitter if you guys are interested. I keep you guys a little bit more updated on there instead of on the YouTube comments about like my progress in recording the chapter. So if you're interested, you can go and follow me there. And I will also post any works in progress uh, uh, drawings that I have at the moment. I am working on one. I haven't worked on it for a while, but it's in progress. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that's kind of it. Uh, Uploads should be on Fridays, hopefully. Um, I will strive to post them on Fridays because uh, recording takes about the whole week and then editing and stuff. So yeah, and now I'm done. Go ahead and enjoy the chapter. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. It really means a lot to me. Enjoy. The morning routine should have been easy and memorized by this point. Wake up, shower, get dressed, eat breakfast, leave for work. Simple. Instead, you struggle to turn off your alarm under the dreariness of sleep so as not to wake the temporary roommate who may or may not be snoozing on your couch in the next room. In your drowsy haste to get up and answer that question, you overestimated how wide your mattress was and almost fell right on your ass to the floor. Whoa! Okay, that woke me up. Now, to just quietly... Mimicking the previous morning, you slowly opened your bedroom door with today's work clothes, held under your arm, and slid towards the couch. There, Bakugo lay once more, looking slightly more comfortable than the night before. Sunlight seeped through his pale blonde hair, and despite his slight scowl even in sleep, this was the most peaceful you'd seen him yet. Your heart raced secretly giddy that he was still there. Three days, you thought to yourself. It was incredibly selfish to want one more day with him, but could anyone blame you? This whole situation still felt like a lucid dream, one that you didn't want to immediately wake up from. You'd gone to bed with a less than stellar mood when Bakugo started asking about your work. Such an innocent question shouldn't have brought the mood down, but it was hard thinking about how much he loved hero work compared to how you skated through the office on autopilot most days. Jealousy wasn't a good look, especially when comparing your very average life to Bakugo's. With a sigh, you tore your eyes away from the sleeping man and tiptoed into the bathroom. Today will be different, you told yourself, as warm water woke you up from early morning lethargy. I don't want to be a downer since he's already dealing with so much, so... I'll do my best to keep him happy, whatever the hell that means. Not like I can summon bad guys for him to fight. But tomorrow's Saturday and he doesn't have to be cooped up here by himself. Maybe we can find some common ground and I can show him around town. Take his mind off all this? If he's here, that is. Thinking that this might be his last day here made you a bit sad, but everything surrounding this situation fell squarely outside of your influence to change. After getting ready for work, you opened the bathroom door to find him still asleep. Considering his bad mood yesterday morning, you thought it best to let him rest. Instead of making breakfast, you silently grabbed a granola bar from the cabinet before taking the notepad he'd used yesterday, judging by the missing pages, and used your phone to translate a note, careful to copy down the Japanese characters exactly. Bakugo might have messy handwriting, but you didn't want him to throw insults right back at you. Be back at seven. It read. With one last look towards the sleeping man on your couch, you opened the door and locked it behind you before walking out into the hallway. Before hitting the stairwell, one of your neighbors came out of her own apartment. You'd seen her many times and held brief conversations but never properly exchanged names. She was an older woman, with a bit of a limp, and glasses too large for her face. She always nodded or waved if you passed by while taking her small dog with one eye out for a walk. He looked almost as old as she did, so maybe they made a perfect pair. Good morning, she said as you passed by. Morning, you replied, about to head down the stairs, but she cleared her throat as if wanting to hold a longer conversation. I don't mean to pry, 
she said, her head swiveling from side to side as if being watched despite there being no one else in the hallway. But are you okay? I heard some awful yelling last night while taking little Charlie here out. Immediately, you stiffened, thinking back to the yelling match between yourself and Bakugo after you got home from work. Without context, it probably did sound like a fight going on, but you didn't want to alarm her or anything. Lying it was. Uh, oh, yes, yes, I, I'm fine. Uh, a friend and I were just watching a movie. He, um, doesn't hear so well, so the volume got a bit loud. Sorry. Her glasses magnified her eyes as they widened like saucers. Oh, a movie. You kids in movies. What was it? Shit, you thought. Improvise. Something loud, something... Transformers, you blurted out. The Michael Bay one, with all the explosions and robots? She looked a bit confused, but nodded, telling you she bought the fib. Maybe my grandson knows. I just stick to my drama stories. You know, uh, there's this one where... I'm very sorry, but I have to get to work. Uh, bye. You interrupted before nearly tripping down the stairs in your haste. You power walked down the last flight and onto the sidewalk before you took a deep breath to steady your nerves. I'll be so pissed if I get a noise complaint because of him. So this just means no more yelling. <laughs> yeah, okay. You told yourself. This was Bakugo you were talking about but you'd do everything within reason to avoid any more arguments and keep him happy. As you walked to work, Bakugo slept. Bakugo only dreamed when deep and comfortable sleep hit him. That kind of ease couldn't come from sleeping on a couch, in a world he didn't belong. Even so, the past few days must have exhausted him more than he thought, because he slept later than he did even on his days off back home. He felt a blanket that wasn't his, cushions that weren't his and the smell of an apartment that didn't belong to him. Red eyes snapped open to see your ceiling before closing them for a moment, hoping he could wake up from this stupid, infuriating dream. Unfortunately, when his sleep-blurred vision cleared, Bakugo still wasn't home. I'm going to murder that fucking villain that did this. He mumbled while sitting up. For some reason, he expected to hear your voice, but instead, only silence greeted him. He looked around the apartment to find it empty, and judging by how the sun streamed in through the blinds of the tall window in your living room, he assumed you must have already left for work. Bakugo remembered his attitude the previous morning when you were generous enough to make him breakfast, and how you nearly slammed the door when you left. Shit. The thought jogged his memory on the plan he developed last night. Be nice to you. It was strictly a tactical decision that developed for several reasons. Number one, he still didn't really trust that your behavior, generosity, and accommodating attitude stemmed only from trying to be nice. There had to be another reason, right? If you knew more than you were letting on, he'd find out. But if his sour attitude, justified though it was, made you reserved and unwilling to talk? No good. He hated lying, so screw that idea. He'd just be slightly more agreeable than usual. No fucking problem. Number two, Bakugo never went back on his word, and he meant it two days ago that if you wanted him gone, he'd leave. That was far from ideal, obviously, because he'd have nowhere to go, no reliable food source, no shower, nothing. Your presented kindness butted up against your low tolerance for his ego, so playing it safe and not getting himself kicked out was a priority. He wouldn't fight you on that. He hated the third reason the most. Besides you... There was no one to talk to. He couldn't even read the damn street signs here. Bakugo valued time by himself, but only because he chose to spend time alone, not because it was forced on him. Kirishima, Kaminari, Deku, hell, even Jiro dragged him into things, and, despite his protests, Bakugo valued those friendships now that he was older. They worked together, saved lives together, won battles, and celebrated together, sometimes mourned together when all their efforts just weren't enough. He missed his friends and hero work, no doubt about it. If you were willing to talk to him and keep him from ripping his hair out from boredom, he'd take it, and that meant keeping you placated. Fuck this sappy shit. He groaned while easing up off the couch to stretch. If I'm stuck here, can't be lazy. I gotta train somehow. 
Bakugo sat in front of your TV stand and sorted through your DVD collection hoping to find something useful. In the process, he did find a couple of anime box sets and movies that looked interesting. At least he could understand the language, so it was better than sitting around in silence. He also found a couple of workout videos that were clearly catered towards women, but maybe they could still work. After fixing a simple breakfast, he cleaned up and put the dishes away. Step one of being nice? Don't make a damn mess. He wasn't a messy person anyway, but annoying you with dirty dishes or misplaced things would ruin his plan. While cleaning, he found the note you left this morning, with your carefully practiced handwriting that looked obviously copied from an online translation. When you got back from work wasn't any of his business, so he paid it little mind. Thank God no one's here to see this. Kaminari would have a field day with blackmail, he said, while putting in one of the DVDs. Not that he considered exercise to be gendered, but he was used to more extreme strength training in a large, hero-specific gym with equipment and room to move compared to whatever mild cardio this might entail. Considering he couldn't read the menus, it took a minute to get the damn video to actually start. After five minutes, he shut it off with a groan, determining he could work out better on his own. While out wandering around the previous day, Bakugo passed by a small park area. Could be a decent spot to brainstorm routines without using his quirk since the weather was nice. Bakugo looked down at his hands and popped off a few sparks before closing them tightly into fists, his knuckles white and muscles tense. Keeping his quirk a secret pissed him off, but drawing attention to himself or causing an uproar with bystanders would create problems. Being stuck inside isn't doing me any favors. He echoed in the empty living room. His mind ran more efficiently while actively engaged with something other than mulling about doing nothing anyway. On that note, Bakugo changed into the one pair of workout shorts he picked out, grabbed the spare apartment key, and disappeared beyond the door. Meanwhile, you sat at one of the tables outside your office building and ate some lunch you picked up at a small corner store nearby. They knew the names of half your co-workers by now, due to how often everyone grabbed food there. Cheap and convenient made for a perfect lunch. While eating, you wondered about what the hell you were going to do about tomorrow if Bakugo was still here. What does he even do for fun? All I know is he trains and sleeps and likes video games, but what else? There were things to do around town, sure, but all of it seemed boring in comparison to whatever he and his friends probably got up to. He also had no identification, which limited things to places where an ID wasn't needed. When I get home, maybe I can toss around some ideas and see if one sticks? I don't want him to be bored. But will he even want to hang out with me in the first place? The abrupt idea that Bakugo might just want to be left alone made you fidget. You really wanted to get along, but of course you wouldn't, and probably couldn't, force him to do anything he didn't agree to. Still, you figured he must be bored staying around your apartment or any nearby areas. Despite his general attitude issues, it wasn't so bad having Bakugo around. Loneliness sometimes crept up on you while being single and without a roommate, so having someone to talk to was a nice change. Of course, you had friends you could hang out with, but last-minute plans usually didn't pan out. Plus, half of them were in relationships, and you hated being a third wheel. I wonder if he's figured out any more ideas on going home. I don't know what he could exactly do from here, though. Although thinking up weekend ideas to keep Bakugo entertained and wondering if he had any control over his situation kept your mind busy, the thrill of office work called. With a groan, you finished your lunch and walked back inside. Friday afternoons were always the slowest. Everyone wanted to go home, and productivity slowed dramatically compared to earlier in the week. But of course, you had to stay busy. Your mind drifted to Bakugo every once in a while wondering what he was doing and whether or not you'd have another argument tonight. If you could just keep him in a good mood, then everything might just be tolerable. Might being the key word. As you suffered through the last few hours of work, Bakugo sat alone on a park bench as the sun began to sink down over the horizon of buildings and trees in the distance. The tree behind him cast a dancing shadow over his face, a cool breeze blowing through the branches that licked the sweat from his brow. He closed his eyes and listened. Chirping birds, 
rustling leaves, walking people, laughing children, honking cars. Normal, everyday sounds, for everyone except heroes anyway. Bakugo was used to the cacophony of violence and the unpredictability of a sudden fight. They often broke out when people least expected it, leaving panic and destruction in their wake. He'd seen whole buildings fall apart and neighborhoods reduced to rubble. Civilians ran away while he sprinted directly into danger. In comparison, the quiet peacefulness here was jarring. Of course, crime still existed, but probably on a far less destructive scale. For that, Bakugo felt grateful. In his world, heroes were necessary to combat villains, both weak and strong, in order to keep people safe and prevent assholes from taking over. Bakugo opened his eyes and gazed from one side of the small park near your apartment to the other as a light sunset glow casts itself on the green grass and concrete walkways, coating them in an orange and blue haze. He'd been out here for hours doing what exercises he could without any equipment or using his quirk, running, push-ups, cardio, even hanging from a low tree branch by his knees to do sit-ups. It didn't engage him like the gyms back home, but it allowed him to evict pent-up energy and gave him a clear mind to see the path ahead. Continue thinking about ways to get home while avoiding pissing off the person who owned his temporary shelter. I don't even know what time it is. Shit, what did that note say? Seven? It seemed too early to be that late, but it made him realize how hungry he was and how desperately he wanted a shower. He had no trouble finding his way back to your apartment building while still remaining aware of his surroundings for anyone or anything suspicious. Once inside, he looked at the clock on the microwave. About 5.30. He had time to take a shower and grab a snack before you got back, which would be the perfect time to enact Operation Act Nice. While Bakugo sat around in your apartment, you began your walk home from work. Friday evenings usually left you feeling invigorated with thoughts of a relaxing weekend on the horizon, but if you woke up to Bakugo sleeping on your couch again, then those plans flew right out the door. You had a few ideas to present to him tonight and hoped at least one of them interested him enough to do something other than mope or complain. Will he be there? Or will he wander around again doing who knows what? You wondered aloud while climbing the steps up to your apartment. Be nice. Don't say anything dumb. Don't stare. Maybe I can manage at least one of those? You opened the door and were greeted with the sound of obvious video game noises coming from inside. After sliding off your shoes and closing the door quietly, you walk towards the couch to see familiar pale blonde hair sticking up from the back as two characters battled it out with grunts and light shows on the TV screen. Video games seemed to put him in a good mood two days ago, so maybe you could make this work to your advantage. You watched silently until the fight was over and the word victory sprawled across the screen. Uh, hey, you said to catch his attention. Immediately, Bakugo paused the game and looked over the back of the couch at you with those pretty red eyes of his. Don't stare, echoed in your head once more as you opened up the translator app on your phone. Bakugo tossed the controller to the side and stood up, eyeing you while he walked towards your small kitchen. Are you hungry? Cause I am. He asked, with hands on his hips. The question caught you off guard since you didn't exactly expect him to care about whether or not you might be hungry. He quirked an eyebrow at whatever perplexed expression you made. Yeah, actually, uh, I could eat. I normally eat lunch around one, so by the time I get home, I'm pretty hungry. Let me go change and I can get started on dinner. You answered. Before you could turn around towards your bedroom, though, Bakugo interrupted. No, I'm cooking. He stated, as an absolute fact. He really did not want to start an argument so soon, and especially not about something so stupid. Your tendency to think about his comfort first bugged the hell out of him. You sighed before sliding the phone between the two of you on the kitchen counter. You're sort of like a guest, and guests shouldn't cook? I don't mind. Bakugo clicked his tongue in response. You won't win this fight. Why the hell did you let me pick out food if you don't want me to cook it? Also, I'm not some lazy freeloader who doesn't pull his own weight. But you have enough to deal with, you argued. But Bakugo just ignored you and proceeded to pull things out of the fridge and set them on the counter. Okay, well, fine then. Just know that I'm not making you do this, so... Uh, 
All right, you're not listening. Your footsteps padded against the floor behind him until he heard a door open and close. Bakugo smirked to himself. She hasn't known me long enough to realize I don't lose at anything. He really was a smug asshole. He'd keep up this act of politeness even if it pissed you off. Stubbornness always won out. You closed the bedroom door behind you and almost rubbed your eyes before remembering you were wearing makeup, and smudged mascara wasn't on trend this decade. I shouldn't complain if he wants to help out, really. That'd be dumb, right? Plus, Bakugo Kotsky making me dinner again? Hello? It'd be stupid to turn him down. It would be rude. And I kind of have done a lot for him. You murmured to yourself while picking out some pajamas to wear. You really did want to make him as comfortable as possible. But if Bakugo offered to lend a hand in some type of bartered repayment plan, then you'd try not to object. Ah, much better. Sliding on a big soft shirt and stretchy pants felt far more comfortable than your business casual work clothes. Bakugo wore the clothes you bought him the previous night, which told you he silently appreciated the gesture. His dad works in fashion from what I remember, so I bet he has fancy clothes back home. But he can't know I know that, or he'd literally blow me up. You ran your fingers across your lips with an imaginary zipper as a reminder to be careful when speaking to Bakugo. He was incredibly perceptive and would pick up on any slip-ups. With that in mind, you opened your door to find him busy at the stove with his back to you, only turning for a split second to look over his shoulder before returning to his work. Maybe you could make small talk and pick his brain about ideas he had on getting home. So you said while grabbing your phone off the counter, careful not to get too close to Bakugo holding a knife. Do you have any more theories on how to possibly get back to your world? Or do you still think this is some dream you need to wake up from? Bakugo just wanted to remain focused on dinner, but telling you to fuck off didn't mesh with his plan. So he indulged your curiosity to see how you'd react without looking up from slicing vegetables. What else do you have to do here besides think? I have theories and ideas. And no, I don't think this is just some made-up shit in my head. It's too elaborate. Too many unknown factors for one idiot villain to think up on their own. He answered. After an afternoon spent at the park observing random people for hours, he was convinced this whole world couldn't be a lucid dream. There'd be a slip-up by now. A tear in the reality. No one. Not even the strongest of villains could keep that kind of complex illusion going for long. You hummed off to the side as if considering his words. So you think they acted alone? Are most villains independent or do they work in groups? Acknowledging your prying questions and replying tactfully might yield something useful, Bakugo thought to himself. They're all different, so it depends on their motives and the scope of their plans. He stirred a simmering pot before probing just a bit further. Why do you want to know? It's none of your business. It technically was, since he was intruding on your life, but voicing that aloud put himself at a disadvantage. You shuffled a bit, and it didn't go unnoticed. Well, I mean, two brains are better than one, right? I'm just trying to brainstorm and maybe come up with something you hadn't thought of yet. Not that you're not smart. You're obviously super smart. He heard you clear your throat only glancing up through his peripheral vision for a moment before returning to the food. I guess I watch a lot of TV and read a lot of books, so that's where my ideas come from since quirks aren't exactly my area of expertise. I like figuring things out and theorizing and finding answers to things. It's sort of what I do at work and I think I'm pretty good at it. He replied with a smile. He judged it to be genuine. Bakugo turned to face you now one hand leaning on the stove, with the other stuffed in his pocket. Yeah, I am pretty damn smart. You rolled your eyes at his confirmation, but he resisted a quip at your expense. But if you have ideas, spit them out. Really? You said, almost flabbergasted, that he wanted to hear your thoughts on the situation. It was odd seeing you excited about something after your drab mood yesterday. O okay, um... So, I have some ideas. Tell me if they sound dumb or are super obvious. Pfft, I won't hesitate. He taunted while turning back to the food. You ignored him and continued. 
So, I've been trying to think about whether or not you appearing here is random. As in, could you have been sent anywhere? Or did the villain send you here on purpose? That doesn't make sense to me though, because obviously I don't know any villains, so how would they know to send you here? Bakugo came to the same conclusion over the course of the past couple of days, so on this he agreed. If the villain wanted to destroy him, why send him somewhere fairly safe like this on purpose? Unless… But there's the possibility that it doesn't matter where you were sent, and that their plan was to get you out of the way for some other reason. But that still tells me the villain might not control it, because why send you to my apartment specifically? You hummed while deep in thought, which gave Bakugo a brief opportunity to analyze your behavior and appearance. He watched you cross your arms as a finger tapped the inside of your elbow. Mouth quirked off to the side as you stared at nothing in particular. You didn't look tense or particularly stressed about talking to him about these ideas, so he guessed that your ramblings were an honest attempt to brainstorm solutions or reasons for how he ended up here and why. Still, he wanted you to keep talking. By some miracle, you might come up with something he hadn't already considered. Your gasp made him look up, thinking that something was wrong. What? He asked. I just thought of something. The distress on your face put him on edge a bit. If this really was random, then you were super lucky. What if you ended up at the bottom of the ocean or out in space? Oh, that'd be awful. <gasps> You shivered as if just considering those morbid possibilities sent chills down your spine. Bakugo had seen plenty of disturbed expressions over the years, so he knew immediately yours wasn't fake. For the briefest of moments, he almost felt guilty, but the feeling disappeared as quickly as it surfaced. Truth be told, he had been avoiding those conclusions for the very same reason. Thinking of those what-if scenarios meant considering the fact he might very well be dead right now. He could handle a lot of different scenarios and work around rough terrain, but appearing in an active volcano, in the middle of the ocean, maybe even underground, trapped in a cave system far below the surface of the planet? Avoiding those hypotheticals and focusing instead on the existing issues was far healthier for his mental stability. Sorry, sorry, you exclaimed, hands waving a bit which brought him out of the grim scenarios running through his head. I didn't mean to make that morbid. Bakugo shrugged and kept his focus on the food in front of him, hands working deftly around the knives and pots. I've considered those, but it's stupid to dwell on things that didn't happen. In my line of work, getting caught in your own head can be dangerous. You hummed, considering the consequences of choosing hero work as a career. The fame, the recognition, the excitement, it all carried a price. Even someone as talented and proficient as Bakugo couldn't save everyone. There had to be moments where a plan went wrong, but you hoped those moments were extremely rare. You pushed those imaginary ideas to the side, not wanting to get wrapped up in something too depressing. From how he talked about his friends and other heroes the past few days, it seemed like Bakugo had a better grasp on his friendships as an adult. So maybe he and his colleagues had a mutual support system when one of them had an especially rough day. The words of All Might rang in your head. You can only save the people you can reach. Bakugo definitely seemed like the type of person who would try his damnness to reach everyone, no matter the cost. Oi. A pair of fingers snapped near your face. You looked up to see Bakugo cutting his eyes towards you with a quirked brow while still maintaining control of the stove. I just said don't dwell on it. Got any more theories? Um, yeah. Sorry, I get lost in my head sometimes. Staring off into space during conversations was somewhat of a trait that you couldn't shake off. I was wondering what kind of technology you had in your universe. And have people always had quirks? You knew that quirks weren't actually traits that existed forever in his world, so asking vague questions would be the safe route. If you're thinking of a time travel theory, I've already considered that. Doesn't work. You gapped at him. Bakugo truly was smart. He knew your line of thinking just from a few questions. 
At least he seemed intrigued by your first ideas, which in turn made you feel kind of smart too. Oh yeah? You asked, curious how he came to that conclusion. The smell of the food filled your nose, making your mouth water, but you tried not to drool too much. Bakugo turned off the heat on the stove while remaining focused on your question. Quirks have only been around about nine generations, so honestly not that long. The technology here, from what I've seen, isn't far behind what we have back home. If we were back in time, computers and cell phones probably wouldn't even exist. You hummed while carefully walking behind him to grab some plates from the cabinets next to the stove. His logic made sense, so this being an earlier iterance of his universe seemed unlikely. There remained so many different options and pathways that led him here that you weren't sure if voicing all your ideas was even productive if Bakugo couldn't do anything from this end to send himself back home. Stop zoning out, weirdo, said Bakugo as he snapped in front of your face again. Food's done. You wanted to call out his name calling, but instead let it slide to avoid an argument. You stepped back to let Bakugo load up his own plate with food before walking to the kitchen table, letting you plate your own. It all smelled delicious, and though you recognized all the ingredients as things you bought at the store, he'd used a few of them in interesting ways and combinations. Some of it smelled vaguely spicy, but you took some of everything anyway to avoid appearing rude. Grabbing your phone, you set it between the two of you before taking a bite of everything. You were right about the spice, but it wasn't nearly as offensive as the first time he cooked. It complemented the other flavors beautifully. The food was fucking delicious. Bakugo studied your reaction to the food. It was incredibly tempting to load it up with spices and peppers, but making it inedible to you would, once again, cut into his plan of keeping you in a good mood. He watched your eyes go wide and an oddly content smile cross your face. He was very aware of his cooking skills, and would gladly boast about them if prompted. Mmm, it's so good, you exclaimed, as the phone struggled to translate with your mouth full of food, but Bakugo got the gist of it. Mm, thank you for making dinner. Mm, like I've said, you didn't have to, and, and thanks for not killing my taste buds with spice this time. He scoffed before taking his own bite. Yeah, it was good but he wanted to shift the conversation back to something productive. Any other theories? You swallowed another mouthful, your eyebrows furrowing in perceived concentration before he watched you shake your head. Mm -mm. No, I mean, you've had more time to think up stuff than I have since I've been at work. The only thing I can say is, if there's a way to trigger you going back home from this end, I have no clue what that'd be. If, as he'd concluded, quirks truly didn't exist here, then that idea was probably true. He didn't even know what the damn villain looked like, so if they were hiding out here and observing him from afar, he might not even know it. He'd been on high alert since realizing what triggered all this, but nothing showed for it. It pissed him off. Sorry, I can't be of more help. He heard you say from the other side of the table. You looked dejected but obviously not as much as he felt with so few answers after three days of critical thinking. But, you cut in with an oddly light-hearted change in tone. Even if I can't do much about that, I have some ideas for the weekend if you're open to it. Bakugo narrowed his eyes suspiciously. So, you think I'll still be here tomorrow, huh? Your face fell, but it didn't appear as though he caught you in a lie or scheme. I mean... Guess I'm trying to think of a what-if situation. Uh, of course, if you're back home tomorrow, that'd be great. I don't know what you've been doing the past two days, but I figured you'd be bored. I don't work Saturdays or Sundays, so the weekend is free if you want to do something other than hang around here all day. Do tell what you assume I'd find fun. Sarcasm came so naturally to him that he didn't realize how snarky it sounded until after the fact. Luckily, you didn't seem mad. In fact, you looked even more determined, like he lit a fire in your eyes. I mean, I can go out and do stuff by myself if you want to sulk here all day. That's your choice. You stuck your tongue out at him like a stubborn brat. It made his eye twitch. I'm just imagining having fun, not stuck inside. Wow, so great. Amazing. You mocked. I'm offering. Take it or leave it. 
Bakugo seethed through his nose. He hated that you were, once again, right. He was bored out of his mind here with nothing to do but think. He had no money, no transportation, and couldn't even read the damn signs posted up on streets and shops. A feeling of regret that he hadn't taken extra language courses in UA nagged the back of his brain. You looked smug, and he tried not to blow up the fork in his hand. All right, smartass, he echoed across the table. Tell me your ideas and I'll tell you if they're shit or not. Despite the sarcastic grin on his face, you were relieved to know Bakugo would at least hear you out on your ideas. Let me clean up dinner first and then I'll make a list. Since he made dinner, it was only fair that you cleaned up, right? He waved a hand in the air as if giving you permission to whisk away his plate. You rolled your eyes while grabbing the dishes and tossing them into the sink. Bakugo got up from the table and sat down on his makeshift bed looking deep in thought. You started to notice his small mannerisms, catching glances whenever he wasn't looking your way. He could remain incredibly still without appearing zoned out like you were often guilty of. He clicked his tongue right before he said something sarcastic. Not all the time, but often enough. His bottom lip jutted out in a bit of a scowl when he was frustrated. To keep from staring, you busied yourself with the dishes, your hands pruny by the time you set the last plate in the drying rack. Before sitting down on the couch, you bent over next to the TV stand and pulled out a laptop case, opening it up and pulling out the computer inside. You usually just used your phone for everything, but it'd be faster to search and open up websites on something with more processing power. Okay, so... You mumble, while typing away in the search bar. There were a couple of travel websites that appealed to tourists. Perfect. We have an aquarium. I went a long time ago and remember it being pretty nice. It's big, too. Out of the corner of your eye, Bakugo remained a bored-looking statue, so you continued with your list of ideas. Uh, we have a really big park downtown with some fancy gardens and stuff if you're into that. It wasn't the most exciting idea, but you put it out there anyway. Again, no reaction. There's an art museum, but it's not super big, and... Oh! You bonked yourself on the head as your main idea returned to you, having almost forgotten about it. Amusement park, rides, games, all that stuff. It's probably the most exciting thing to do around here. Bakugo looked at you expectantly, as if waiting for you to add to the list. When you remained silent, he clicked his tongue. Pfft. That it? He asked. You chewed your lip, a bit anxious that none of it appealed to him at all. At least you tried to give him some options. It was ultimately his decision whether or not he wanted to stay here and be bored, or spend the day with you doing something mildly entertaining. Yeah, I don't know what kind of things you do for fun in your own universe, but this is all I can think of right now. Like I said, you don't have to do anything, but I'm offering. If he was honest with himself, disgustingly, horribly honest, Bakugo actually liked a few of the ideas. Hero work took up a vast majority of his time and energy, so when he wasn't training or kicking villain ass, Bakugo savored the rare days off to relax and unwind, possibly even unwind with friends with patrol shifts opposite his own. Even then, going out in public meant navigating around swarming fans who recognized him, or avaricious reporters chasing him around for magazine interviews about shit that wasn't any of their business. Here? He was nobody, an unknown factor, just another bystander among the crowds. Nothing stood out to him as suspicious yet, but of course he wasn't about to let his guard down. Still, a day out to explore this place and keep an eye on you at the same time? Just the idea of sitting around here doing nothing made him seethe, so taking you up on the offer sounded better than nothing. Does the park have roller coasters? He asked curiously. Bakugo liked thrill rides and this might be the best chance he had at getting his adrenaline pumping, if he couldn't use his quirk. You smiled excitedly. Yeah, I love roller coasters. They have a bunch of different ones, uh, here. You said, pulling up the website to the park and turning your laptop screen towards him. An advertisement video played showing off people with fake smiles and terrible tourist clothes. He watched as the video cut through quite a few rides, highlighting the staggering height and innovative loops and curves of some of the coasters. Admitting it out loud was out of the question, 
but Bakugo felt a small pang of excitement thinking about whipping through the air at fast speeds. So, is that a yes? He hesitated. But honestly, you seemed terrible at hiding your own excitement and hoping for his confirmation. Maybe if you were distracted with the business of an amusement park, he could catch you in a lie. Though he was becoming increasingly sure you didn't know the villain and had nothing to do with any of this, just someone caught up in his own mess. Letting his guard down once got him into this dilemma, though, so he'd remain vigilant. Yeah, yeah, fine. Sounds better than playing games all day, anyway. When your phone translated what he said, you practically toppled the laptop to the ground in excitement. He quirked a brow in your direction. <laughs> sorry. I was sort of hoping you'd lean towards that one. You admitted. The other attractions were fine, sure, but the park would definitely be the most fun as long as Bakugo didn't get an attitude during the day, which he very well might if he was around groups of loud people all day. But that's what he chose, so you assumed he could handle it. I haven't been in a long time, and I know they have some new rides and stuff, so... Bakugo stared at you curiously, his expression unreadable, as if he was analyzing your every move and word. And what if I'm gone tomorrow? What will you do? He asked. You hummed while closing your laptop before turning back to him. Mm, sleep in? Be lazy? Read? Relax? The normal stuff people do on weekends, right? Why? What do you and your friends do for fun? You shot back. Bakugo scoffed and folded his hands behind his head, and once again you tried desperately not to stare at his scarred and sculpted arms. Bakugo gazed off at an invisible spot on your ceiling, while he spoke as if memories replayed like a tape behind those crimson eyes of his. With hero work, there isn't that much downtime. Sometimes you're on call any time, any day. Villains don't give a shit about our schedules. They'll attack whenever. But sometimes days are slow, which is a good thing. And we managed to get away. Kirishima is the only one who can keep up with me if we go hiking. He's like a smiling brick wall. Kaminari sticks to parties even though he's a lightweight. Kaminari... Did you mention him before? You asked, wanting to know more about how Bakugo described his friends and their quirks. Bakugo shrugged, hands still seated behind his head. He's basically like a walking Pikachu. But the mouse is probably more powerful because it doesn't turn into a bumbling dipshit if it zaps too much. At that honest description, you had to laugh. So he really did describe Kaminari as a famous Pokemon. <laughs> there are so many different kinds of quirks. Oh, wait, so you have Pokemon in your world? The realization sold the look of shock in your expression. Of course, Horikoshi would add references to existing media within his own story, but according to Bakugo, the games existed in his world too. Like, the games and stuff? Wait, do you? Asked Bakugo, while finally looking your way. So that's one more thing that overlaps between worlds. He seemed to say it more to himself than to you, as if wondering if it meant anything significant. You, on the other hand, had more pressing questions. Okay, so now I gotta ask, even if it's lame... Do you have a favorite Pokemon? If he had an answer, you absolutely had to wrangle it out of him. Immediately, he groaned as if you asked him something far more mentally taxing. Seriously? He replied with an eye roll. I don't fucking know. I haven't played those damn games since I was a teenager. Did he have a completely predictable favorite Pokemon? Yeah. Yeah, he did. But if you wanted to weasel information out of him he'd get something back. Tell me yours first. He goaded with a slight smirk. He watched you close your eyes and cross your arms as if considering the solution to an incredibly difficult problem. Mm, there's so many. Ah, uh, which one? You mumbled to yourself, too quiet for the translator to pick up. Bakugo clicked his tongue with impatience before you turned to him with a confident smile. The answer apparently on the tip of your tongue after much mental deliberation. Huh? That one? That's so lame. Bakugo said after you aired out your favorite Pokemon. What? No, it's not. You argued with a pout. Whatever, I told you. Now tell me yours. He hated being ordered around. 
Curiosity got the better of him, though, so he decided to see how much you assumed about him after three days. Guess, he said, holding up three fingers to signal the number of attempts. Rather than give up or get mad, you looked determined. It was a look he knew well on others, but this stubborn streak of yours showed itself more often than he first assumed it would. Once again, he watched you close your eyes and assumed you were sifting through hundreds of Pokemon to try and find one that fit his personality. You mumbled to yourself, sometimes shaking your head as though tossing away unfit Pokemon, while other times you nodded or your eyebrows shot up before shifting back into something more neutral. Bakugo observed you had an extremely expressive face, so if you lied, he could probably tell. Okay, you said, your eyes snapping open and a lopsided grin plastering on your face. Three guesses. You held up a finger, but seemed slightly hesitant with this first guess. Primeape? Bakugo ground his teeth together at such a disastrous answer, one of his hands leaning off the couch arm opening and closing into a fist. Ha! Huh? The monkey in the first generation? Why that thing? Immediately, your hands went up defensively. I mean, it's sort of spiky, like your hair, and you both have short tempers? His nostrils flared while you continued. You just seem like someone who doesn't take any shit and will put up a fight, is all. Uh, thinking back to a few days ago, you answered while nervously cutting your eyes away. His anger was justified considering the circumstances, but thinking back to how you reacted to him with fear brought forward a bit of clarity on your reasoning. The reminder of, be nice, popped back into his brain, so he tried to calm himself down after hearing you nail down his temper and impatience. No, he emphasized with a glare. It's not the angry monkey. Try again. After that, he watched you relax. If he wanted to remain on your good side, being more aware of his actions was essential. Hmm, all right then. Ugh, I can only remember stuff from the first three or four games, but one came to mind pretty quickly. He gestured for you to continue. Typhlosion? His eye twitched. You stared at him. His top lip curled. You grinned like a sly fox. He looked away with a sneer. You laughed triumphantly. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> oh shit, I'm right, aren't I? While going through your mental list of Pokemon, the one that immediately came to mind was the one with a punny name of Explosion. So of course, that would be one of your answers. Primeape was an attempt to be cheeky, a calculated risk that luckily didn't get sparks thrown in your face. Lucky fucking guess, he admitted, but couldn't help but get excited at him admitting you chose the correct Pokemon. Mmm, well, it kind of fits your quirk, so not that lucky, you argued before quickly looking away with a smug grin when he shot you a glare. Before the computer almost toppled to the floor again, you stood up and set it back down next to the TV before returning to the couch, making sure to sit as far away from Bakugo as possible, since being close to him in any capacity made you a bit nervous. Not because you were scared of him or anything, but you assumed he had personal boundaries that you didn't want to risk crossing. So, uh, tomorrow. If you're still here and still want to go to the park, what time do you want to go? Early. Was all he said. Avoid long lines. Go to the biggest red first. Apparently, he'd already strategized a plan of attack, and you didn't want to argue. If you could keep Bakugo entertained and somewhat happy and distracted for the day, it was worth it. I guess that means when the park opens. You sighed, knowing you had a 50-50 chance of sleeping in tomorrow. I think it opens at 10, with about half an hour to get there, so we'd leave at 9.30. That work? You asked. He just shrugged, so you took that as your answer. Since you had a preliminary agenda for tomorrow and it was starting to get late, getting a good night's rest for whatever lay ahead in the morning seemed like a good idea. You stood up and stretched, yawning while you walked into the bathroom for your normal nightly routine, unaware of Bakugo watching you subtly out of the corner of his eye. He huffed through his nose and ran a hand through his hair while wondering what the hell he was going to do tomorrow if he wasn't back home. Theme park? Really? There were probably worse things you could have suggested, 
and the fact that you offered up some ideas at all to keep him entertained made him secretly grateful that he wouldn't wallow inside his own frustrations for another day. And honestly, he needed a fucking break. Letting his guard down was out of the question, but if a couple of rides could get his adrenaline pumping and he could walk around in a wide open space with a bit of freedom, saying no sounded stupid. The bathroom door opened and you walked out to grab your phone from the couch before turning to him. I'm going to sleep. If uh, you're back home tomorrow, then no worries. If not, then we'll deal with it. Good night, Bakugo. He grunted in response while you walked behind him and disappeared behind your bedroom door. Sleep sounded pretty decent to him, too. Damn, I miss my bed. He mumbled, while getting up to brush his own teeth and turn out the lights. Your bathroom was simply decorated with a shower curtain that matched the hand towels that matched the soap dispenser that matched the rug. It wasn't his personal style, but it wasn't hideous or anything. He looked at himself in the mirror above the sink and scoffed. He wasn't supposed to be here. He was supposed to be in his own universe, blasting villains into the ground and training with Kirishima, and eating familiar food and living the life he was meant to live, not stuck here hiding his quirk while relying on someone else. The enamel on his teeth suffered from how vigorously he scrubbed, as if trying to brush away his resentment. After turning out all the lights, he grabbed the folded blanket over the side of the couch and attempted for the third consecutive night to make himself comfortable. Bakugo stared up into the darkness of your living room ceiling, the subtle texture swirling around in his faded vision like moving waves. Stubbornness always won out when it came down to giving in or staring whatever annoying thing he was dealing with right in the fucking eyes. You won't win. Bakugo whispered as he closed his eyes and attempted to imagine himself back home. If he dreamed hard enough, maybe it would become real. Bakugo never went back to on his on his word to his word not on his on his word Ugh. hell even Jiro <coughs> voice stop after five minutes he shut it off with a groan determine de, the, determining Bakugo looked down at his hands hands hand ha, hands meanwhile at Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, <laughs> no. you closed the bedroom and smudged Max. He answered. After an afternoon, after an afternoon, yeah, after an afternoon, okay. I won't hesitate. I won't hesitate, bitch. <laughs> Sorry, okay. <sighs> That's out of my system. <sighs> okay. You can only save the people you reach. You can only- Ah, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I- I- I am here- <laughs> I can't! Ah, okay, okay. <sighs> Professional. <sighs> you can only- <laughs> No, I can't do this, God damn it. Some of it smelled vaguely spicy. But you took some of you, you took you, you took some of everything anyway to avoid appearing rude. Okay, sorry. But making it inedible, uh, in, inedi pff, inedible, <laughs> girl. Oh my god. Nope. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I wonder if the mic is picking him up. <laughs> Catching glances whenever he wasn't looking your way. Phone? Excuse? He was supposed to be in his own universe blasting villains into the ground and training with Kirishima and eating familiar food and living the <sighs> I wanna punch something. <laughs> 